guys, Jeff Allen off the gridiron. Well, today uh, I'm feeling a little, a little under the weather, but uh, I thought I'd come out and uh, quick, quick review or showcase for you my uh, new sheath for uh, my, uh, my bushcraft knife that I made not too long ago in a past video. I'll provide the link up top. And also I've got a <coughs> a uh, dehydrated uh, meal here, and I'm gonna see how uh, how it's gonna rehydrate and make myself a little. Uh, little snack on my uh, re revised little twig stove here. This was another build I did some time ago and uh, we'll showcase for you my new uh, my, my new revisions on my twig stove and uh, we'll uh, see if it works. Hi guys welcome back Jeff Allen off the green iron. So yeah, I brought out some uh, dehydrated, looks like uh, beef and noodles, and uh, we're gonna try to rehydrate that. And we're just gonna get a little area uh, cleaned up here. Here's a closer look at one of my knife setups. And um, this is one of the, uh, this is my own logo. I incorporated the off the grid iron uh, text on there. And um, this is my, Fire steel. Uh, there's the logo on the end there. Fire steel slides down in the pouch, and uh, not that it's going to fall out. It's pretty. It's in pretty tight in there. But that's that's it. Just done a, on a steel ring. And this is just a belt belt clip, so I can even clip it on and off my my belt fairly fairly easily. Um, this is an old uh, a straw, and inside it is uh, I think there's four uh, Q-tip cotton Q-tip heads, and uh, you pinch the end, seal it with a lighter, and now that's a waterproof, airtight uh, pouch uh, that will uh, certainly a tinder pouch that will certainly take a spark. I'll try to provide a link up top if I can to uh, my survival bracelet episode where I incorporated that as part of my bracelet. So here's a knife. It's been uh, certainly beat up over the years. If I were to, to do it again, I would uh, eliminate these these notches. They were put on there originally for the fire steel. And then I turned, uh, I just went ahead and uh, actually tried putting a groove in there from the chainsaw, chainsaw file. But uh, what I found was that a straight 90 degrees spine is much better. And in fact, this uh, kind of jimping um, kind of bothers my, my hand and my thumb when I'm doing any, any fine work. Uh, the point's been uh, kind of ground off over the, uh, over the years after <coughs> many different uh, kind of sharpenings. But uh, anyway, a bit of a convex grind on there. And it works well. Good retention in the uh, in the sheath, and uh, the sheath I um, beefed it up with two rivets at the top, and it really pressure fit in there, and it holds it rather well. One thing I wanted to point out to some people, and I don't know if they've ever ever thought of this, with the fire steel in the the holder like this, much like a, a sharpening steel that a um, kind of in the kitchen is that area at the end is a perfect way to just take that little burr off your off your knife usually a knife doesn't take too much beating but it takes a little little edge off with your little wire edge um, and then along the edge of my sheath with a little bit of compound along there it's a perfect width for stropping stropping your knife and putting putting that little edge back back on the, the, uh, the knife and 
and right back to not quite shaving sharp but certainly sharp sharp enough for any any jobs that I'm going to do so again it uh, drops in there fairly easy locks down and that's been my own sheath I think this is about the third or fourth one I've ever designed not not you know not great but uh, certainly there's something that I'm happy with and uh, it's going to work out well I'll provide the link up top for uh, for this twig stove but uh, basically it comes all assembled like this I've, I've called it actually my trig stove I'm not sure if you can see that but uh, yeah let's have a let's get into it now I just riveted the, these two plates on and I'm, I'm gonna I'm curious to see how well uh, it's it uh, helps the, the drafting of the stove so basically that's uh, two of the locking pins that I use and it closes up on itself Get that out of the way closes up on itself like so these two sides intermesh like this our locking pin clicks down through there and it locks the the seam from folding folding back open and this is an additional bar that I put through the side and again it's under like a pressure fit in there as well there we go and now now the the stove will not open up on its own a little window in the front here and that's where I can put my fuel and the rack drops down to uh, if I wanted to grill anything on there so that's the stove we're going to use today and uh, yeah we'll give it a shot here's another knife I found locally this one was actually in one of these garbage bins metal bins T Turner and company cutlers to his majesty Almost like a bone bone scales on there, um, kind of a sailor spike or marlin spike on there, and uh, had to clean up the blade a little bit. It looks like somebody had used a very rough uh, sander to uh, put an edge back on this. It was covered in drywall dust, but uh, it took uh, took an edge very well. I was just playing with some. Uh, idea of making some feathers for a bit of a feather feather stick here to get the twig stove going you know something like that we'll make up a few of these some wider feathers on there and then you come back to the the edge and just you can just skate your knife blade along the side and then when you want to start a feather you just angle it down a little bit more and that allows the, the knife to bite in and you, by the turning your knife edge, that's what allows you to dictate how, how thin or thick the shavings are going to be. And then when you get to a sufficient piece, you dig in, or at least I dig in, and you can split the piece all the way through. A couple more of those, and we should be ready to go. Let's give my other knife a try. It's 
These were homemade. This one was a homemade one from a, a saw blade, an old sawmill saw blade. Again, this is just on pine right now, so it's fairly, fairly easy to use. I'm just testing it to see if I get any hot spots in my hand. This is a bit of a convex grind on this particular knife. Okay, that should be enough to get the, the fire started. Alright, we'll take our shavings. Them in through the front door. We have some other kindling on hand, so once we get this lit, we can. Until I start burning, I can also open the top and drop drop feed it through the top. So that works too. The lighter, we're just using a, one of these lighters from the dollar store, Super Fuel. One thing I like about this stove is it's got a gate on the front here. I can uh, it opens right down, but <clears throat> if I wanted to, I can always just prop it open like this and put longer pieces across the front, and that'll allow that kind of that rocket stove effect where it can always constantly feed itself and and slide into the into the burn chambers. Got some other pieces of ash here and. I'm just going to get them split up into some of the smaller ones. I've got my homemade hookery here, and it works uh, fairly well. Sometimes you can always hit it on the side as well.
pretty, pretty good. Can afford to have some larger pieces in here now, so. Now that it's going, I can uh, shut this front door a little bit and the wedge is shut. And uh, I can really drop the, drop the fuel in from the top. Yeah, it's really going now, so I'll be able to drop that, drop that grill, and uh, get her water on. Okay, while the uh, the stove is getting a good burn on there, we're gonna get our pot filled up and uh, get ready to go. Here's a new. Uh, I was always trying to, as many people are trying to, uh, obviously modify their kit to uh, to be a little more compact. This was uh, uh, kind of a Canadian made, uh, man, it must be pretty old, but it's a, this is a, an old aluminum kettle, and I was, I've been able to incorporate quite a, quite a few pieces into this kettle, starting with my, my canteen cup, there's the, must hold close to a liter, and in the cup itself, I'm able to take a day's, uh, uh, or a night's worth of rations, uh, noodles, uh, a couple different crystal uh, drink crystals, uh, some instant coffee. This is a chai tea and uh, some oatmeal. And, uh, but it accommodates a whole cup full of uh, food, so that's uh, <coughs> that's super helpful to to have that all fit down and nest in the bottom of the. Uh, pot. Now inside the lid is an Esbit stove my, my friend gave me and uh, it serves as, as its own little micro uh, cook system as, you, as, as some of you have seen before. Fold out handles, the lid. Now inside the lid is a number of uh, extra pieces. So there is uh, a fire block for uh, easy quick lighting of a starting fire. Okay, and this is a uh, ferro rod that I glued into uh, an insulative uh, electrical plug uh, cap. And but it uh, being ceramic, it also works well to put an edge on your knife, uh, scraping it along the surface, much like uh, you would use uh, an old mug. A lighter, and, and uh, these are the Esbit fuel tabs, and they're little flammable tabs. I kept the stove and the, and the bag separate so it doesn't scratch up the inside of the pot. Basically here's your micro and then inside on that square depression there is where you put one of the fuel tablets. Your mug can fit on there like so and comes with its own lid. This is a 400 mil, 16 ounce little pot, but that's a little perfect little day hike system uh, altogether. So <clears throat> I have a larger kettle, this cup or pot, plus another cup and fuel, and uh, good to go. So now that we got that out, we'll get the water on. Looks like uh, our twig stove is coming along and burn along, so we'll uh, we'll get the water on and. Uh, Start warming up our soup. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our canteen cup and we're going to uh, put the, um, the dried, froze dry, kind of the uh, we're going to put the dehydrated soup in the cup 
and add a little bit of water and just uh, bring it to a simmer and uh, see if it uh, see if it works for us. Not sure how much water it's going to take to reconstitute this, but here it is. It comes almost like now there's a great deal of oil in some of these soup cans. I just poured the whole can in here, but uh, we'll uh, we'll put it back in and see if it kind of rehydrates into some kind of a um, soup consistency. So it was one can of soup. I opened it up and. Uh, I poured it, the whole thing in the, uh, into the dehydrator and now we'll see if we can reconstitute it back to uh, something that resembles soup. See how long that takes, we keep fuel on the fire. So once you have your pot back on and the grill in place, it's uh, at that point too hard to add any twigs. So that's when the, uh, the benefit of having this front port on the, uh, the front of the stove and you can just drop your pieces in there. unbelievable this is gonna be good you can still feel the noodles be a little little tough so we're gonna let it sit a little while longer oh this is coming along well you know it's too late to uh, to be on the uh, trail or a first outing to test some of your gear so just coming out to the backyard and, uh, or your porch or wherever wherever you have available to you and uh, try some things whether it be uh, a knife or a twig stove you know it's important that you you go through those uh, learning in uh, in a controlled uh, controlled space and and uh, see see what works and what doesn't work um, and uh, don't learn the don't learn the hard way while you're we're out in a in a desperate situation. So well, one thing I didn't count on was the uh, the log that I put the stove on catching fire. This is why you always need some kind of a protection from the ground if not cooking on a rock but uh, that's okay. Oh, looking good, looking good. I think we're about done. Everything's kind of reconstituted. The noodles are all a little kind of soft and the meat's, meat's all ready to go.
Okay, <clears throat> we're just going to let it cool down a little bit so we can handle. But uh, smells great. Probably uh, one cup of extra water has reconstituted uh, the soup. So I'm just going to let it cool enough, uh, cool down enough to drink. And uh, we'll share with you how it turned out. Stove's dying down now. We'll just let that exhaust itself out. And then we'll be sure to put out the, <laughs> our, our cooking stump, as it were. Looks like it's uh, smoldering away there, but we'll throw it in the snow and uh, that'll work fine. Test time. Got my little <laughs> wooden lap tray, lap serving tray. There we go. Find yourself a spoon. Oh, this is going to be good. I'm uh, fighting off a cold here. It's a couple days before Christmas. I need any help I can get. Nice. Spicy. It's just what I need on a, on a damp date like today. It's got sausage in here as well. Sausage and noodles. A little on the, uh, little on the kind of rubbery side, but uh, great flavor. I think it was on here for about oh, 15, 20, 20 minutes. I think you could have let it let it reconstitute for at least uh, well, at least maybe 40 minutes. Um, I didn't have it at a rolling boil. That might have helped. It was just on the simmer, but uh, uh, quite good flavor for sure. Super good. Yeah, so I was able to take the dehydrator and pour the whole can of soup on the top tray and run it for probably probably close to 10 hours, just overnight. And then I was able to just put it in your Ziploc bag, throw it in the freezer. It was uh, certainly dry to the touch when I put it in the bag, but being in the freezer, I think there's just so much natural oils in uh, in some of these canned soups that uh, <clears throat> they uh, they don't kind of the texture in the freezer doesn't feel dry. It almost feels like a kind of a, a fruit roll up texture, but uh, no, there's uh, it's reconstituted itself uh, back to uh, well back to its original uh, out of the can texture and flavor for sure yeah that's a win and this really saves on taking that taking the can in the woods it cuts down on all the water weight um, you're gonna bring water you can melt snow uh, so this would be a great way to get that that uh, the nourishment on the trail or certainly you could pack a couple of meals um, just by removing the water from it so that's a definite win going to be doing that in the future for sure well guys thanks for watching today as i uh, drink my soup here mm, i want to wish you all the uh the best of the uh holiday season and uh let's have a safe and, and prosperous uh 2020 so jeff allen off the green iron thanks for joining me we had a quick look at my uh, uh kukri my trig or twig stove uh that i built uh these are all tools that i built myself uh which was uh uh, it's, it's really important to me that I, I take that on and, and use items that I've made. I feel very uh, gratified uh, about that. We had a chance to see my uh, <coughs> my kettle kit, how it all breaks down, albeit I didn't use this particular one in this, uh, this exercise, but uh, uh, how it, it really packs down. So that was, uh, that was really good to see. <coughs> We had a look at the Esbit stove that uh, packs down into it. This is a very, uh, very common lightweight uh, pack stove. You might be able to find that on uh, uh, any number of uh, sales websites. And uh, yeah, I'm just enjoying this uh, this cup of soup. Mm. Uh, spicy, spicy minestrone perhaps, but uh, nevertheless, it's been uh, hitting the spot and hopefully 
get me get me well going in the holiday season. Again, Jeff Allen off the Green Iron. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and share. And enjoy your outdoors. Bye for now. As always, cheers.